everyone, it's Yu Yi again. Welcome back to my channel. I really wanted to make this video so that I could go into a little bit more detail as to what triggered my financial fitness journey. I have acquired $146,000 of debt. It is comprised of student loans, a car lease, and credit cards. This is the kind of debt that people cannot even fathom. My first experience with debt was when I was 17, getting ready to go to college. Now, the college I chose, of course, was a private school out of state that neither I nor my parents could afford to send me to. This particular school gave me a grant that basically covered half of the tuition for every year that I attended. So in my head, I thought that was such a great deal. I realized that the other half of the tuition that was not covered by this grant had to be covered by federal student loans, subsidized and unsubsidized. And the remainder of that, I would have to cover by getting private student loans. And that's what I did. That's what people do, you know? It's normal to get student loans. And you know what? I did it because that's what I wanted when I was 17 years old. I knew what I was getting myself into. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that I was fully aware of what would happen after the four years were over. I knew what interest was. I knew how interest accrued. I knew what capitalization was. If I made minimum payments throughout the term of that loan, I would be done when I was somewhere in my 30s. It was $20,000 a year. The original total amount was $76,000. Two months after graduation, that balance was at $96,000. But that's not all. Of course, after graduation, I had to get a car. My parents happened to go to the dealership and they just browsed cars for me. And they happened to find this bright red Nissan Sentra that pretty much screams my personality. This car was like $23,000, but of course that didn't matter. It, the only thing that matters is the monthly payment on it. I went to see this car in person. I loved it and I was just like, all right, when are we signing the papers? Like, I have my, my offer letter here, you know, I can prove I'm getting income. Anyway, that day I drive off the lot with the new car and a lease uh, for 36 months. In August, as I was working at this new company, I had gotten a few paychecks and I wanted to start facing my fear of these student loans because at that point I had only glanced like a little bit on my bank account to see what that quantity owed was and it wasn't pretty. The amount that wasn't really in my face were my private, were, were the federal loans that I had taken out that are serviced, that were serviced by Great Lakes. So if you don't know, Great Lakes is actually one of the better federal loan servicers, at least that's what I've read, and I've had no problems with them, they, they were great. However, I didn't normally sign into that account. So I went in, I saw a number there that shook me to my core. I saw 34,000 something dollars. But then I looked over to the left and I noticed that the first number was actually just a prediction with all of the interest that would accrue over a loan term of 10 years, which is what it was. So the actual number that I owed on August 16th, 2018 was 27,865 and 96 cents, I believe. It was an improvement, but not much, you know? And after tallying up what I see in my checking, in my bank account all the time, the 96K plus the 
almost 28K, that's $123,865 of student loans. So there I was facing my fear of actually finding out how much I owed. It just hit me, like I, I had to change something. And there I was getting paid a decent amount and realizing that once this grace period is over, I would just make it. And that was such a disheartening feeling for me because I felt like I had worked hard to get my degree. And I thought that was the hard part. If you don't have financial literacy, what is the point? And there I was with upcoming student loan payments in six months, a car payment, a rent payment now, utilities, and still wanting to go to restaurants and meet up with friends and spending $200 on every grocery trip. That same night, I went on YouTube and I literally looked up student loan debt, how to pay off student loan debt, and then I got a bunch of budgeting video suggestions. I think the first thing I saw was a video from Asia Dang, and she talks about paying off $43,000 of student loans. So I made a budget and I stuck to it. I tracked all of my expenses. I looked at my checking account to see how much I was spending in every single category. I cut down where I could. So my federal loans were divided into like four unsubsidized, maybe like five um, unsubsidized and three subsidized loans, something like that. I tried paying off the smallest ones first. Sometimes it didn't work out. Sometimes I just wanted to get the bigger one like done, like kind of like the dead avalanche instead of the dead snowball method. And by the time I got to December, I was like, listen, you can get two loans paid off if you just use this extra money in your emergency fund. Took the money out of my savings, threw it at my debt. In that stage of my life, I thought it was good to have credit cards. I was not about to cut my credit card because I paid it off every month. In fact, I paid it off as I made every transaction because I refused to let that balance go over one, even just for them to generate the statement. In March of 2019, I applied for a credit card. It was Capital One. I had this brilliant idea, this absolutely brilliant idea that I could cheat my way to avoid interest on my federal student loans. So this card had 0% intro APR for 15 months. That's over a year. And I thought to myself, as I was learning that credit was not the best, and it didn't really, like my credit didn't matter to me at that point. I was really getting into the Dave Ramsey kind of belief that credit is just a means for you to get into more debt. It's just your relationship to debt. And it's true that that's the only thing it calculates. So I started putting all of my car insurance payments, my like phone service payment, like anything that I usually paid with a credit card that didn't have a, a charge for paying with a credit card, I put it on that card. And I let that accrue month to month because all the cash income that I would receive would now go towards my student loan because this card had a 0% interest and I didn't care about um, carrying over balances. So, but my student loan had like a three to 4% interest rate. So I thought, wow, I'm saving so much money just by putting my regular expenses on this card and being able to pay off my student loans with the income that I get. And then after I'm done by August of 2019, I'll just pay off my credit card and it'll be as simple as that. It was not as simple as that because once you get used to like just adding charges on a credit card, even though I was keeping track of every individual thing I spent, I was like, hmm, maybe I can get my mom a coach bag from this season for Mother's Day. And then I was like, you know, I really want to get a dog. It hurts my soul to say this, but I put my baby boy on a credit card. I financed my dog. That's literally what I did. And even though I had the money to pay for it, I decided not to because I 
thought paying off my student loans was more important. Once I got to August, you know, the first stage of my plan did work out and I paid off my student loans in one year. Um, and I was so happy. I was so proud of myself. And then my phone broke. So of course I had to get the new iPhone. So that sent me back a little bit on my next endeavor, which was to pay off my credit cards. I had to pay off that card. I finished paying off my Discover card in September. I closed my card. Then I was working on my Capital One card. But since it was 0% APR, what I actually did was put all the money that I would put on that card to pay it off into my savings account. I think I had like a 1.5 or 1.6% um, APY at that point. It keeps going down because of current events. And that actually ended up being kind of my safety blanket because by the time um, March of this year came around, I was very scared that I was gonna lose my job. So I'm very happy I did that. And I mean, if you have the chance to like save and gain interest on something, that you're planning to pay off soon at zero like that has zero percent apr it's a good idea to do that i don't see a problem with it anyway i didn't lose my job i'm so lucky i'm so blessed i was able to pay my card and my dog off like in may right you're on mine now so with my private loans, my federal student loans, my car lease, and my credit card, I have, I've accrued, I've, I've gotten myself into $146,000 of debt. The credit card is paid off. My federal loans are paid off. So my remaining debt is about $95,000 because I'm only counting the months remaining on my car lease. After my car lease is done, I am paying off my car. So currently I'm actually saving money to pay my car off until that lease is over. I'm not gonna be making any extra payments on my private student loans because I won't have that money saved up until December of this year. And my car lease is up in May. The other thing is I'm gonna be moving back in with my parents um, in December of this year so that I can save even more money. And once I'm able to start making payments on those private loans, oh, it's gonna feel so good. I'm gonna do the commute. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited, but yeah, anyway, that's all I really, I know I talked a lot, but that's really the gist of how I got myself into this mess. I'm doing my budget. I'm doing everything I can to save money, especially now. <laughs> I actually haven't gone grocery shopping in three months. So if that's a video you'd like to see, I didn't film it, but I could easily do it again. If that's a video that you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and um, Touch the notification bell. I learned that one today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions for me, let me know.